This is Living Power with Dan Hurst. The 14th prophecy, the words of his enemies. Even the words of his enemies were prophesied. Again, around 1000 BC in Psalm 22. He trusts in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him for he delights in him. That's what the prophecy was. Now, how do you get that? How do you, how, how do we, how do we see that fulfilled? Well, in Matthew chapter 27, that's exactly what they were saying. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now. If he desires him, for he said, I am the son of God. And the robbers who were crucified with him also reviled him in the same way. Everybody, except those who were followers, the acquaintances and those women that were there, all of them were saying things like that. Oh, you trust in the Lord. And like the Psalm 27 said, let him deliver him. Let him rescue him. For he delights in him. Ha, 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 ha. And even, get this, even the, and it says both thieves on the cross. Both thieves on the cross were saying that. Now we know that one of the craw, one of the thieves changed his mind. One of the thieves said, when the other one just kept ragging on Jesus, he, he said, look, back off. You know, we deserve this. He doesn't deserve this. What changed his mind? What happened? Here was one thief who at one point was saying, ah, oh, you know, if you're the son of God, you know, let God take you down off the cross. Ha, ha, ha. Now all of a sudden, <coughs> he changes his mind. He saw something in Christ's life. He saw something in Christ's life that led him to understand this man does not deserve to be here. This man is innocent. Now, let me just point something out parenthetically. What was it that he saw in Christ's life? He saw the suffering. He also heard probably the things that Jesus said, some of the things that Jesus said. We'll study the words uh, next Sunday. We're taking a look at the words of the cross. But one of the things that Jesus said was, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. Everything that Jesus said on the cross had incredible spiritual value, eternal value in what it said. And there was something about what Jesus was saying and doing while he was suffering that gave this guy incredible insight to understand that he, first of all, didn't deserve to be there and that he was who he says he was. Now, let me... Let me let me pour something on you here. When is it that people recognize that you are who you say you are? When do people recognize that you are who you say you are? Well, it happens in different ways. You know, I mean, if you're, I'm a fun-loving guy, I'm a partier and everything, well, that's when they recognize that you're a fun-loving partier guy if you're out fun-loving partying. Uh, if, you know, I'm a hard worker, I'm devoted to my work, you know, I'm, you know and if you're a worker and you're devoted to your work, that's when they notice it. You know, I'm a family man, I'm committed to my family, I'm a family woman committed to my family. Well, when they see you with your family, that's when they notice it. But when you talk about being a Christian, when they notice it is when you act like a Christian when everything around you is falling apart. Really, when you're suffering. When you're going through those difficult, critical times, when you're going through times when everything is falling apart and your life is on the line, and you are still focused on what you believe. Your belief system still holds true. Your faith is still on target. That's when people around you begin to notice. Not everybody. Certainly the other, the other uh, uh, thief didn't recognize it, but that one guy did. Oh, and also the centurion did. The centurion that was below the cross looked up and said, surely this is the Son of God. So, there are times in our suffering when people begin to recognize who we are. If you're a Christian, believe me, it is in those difficult times in your life when people are watching, well, let's see what you really believe now. You say you're a Christian, let's see what happens. Maybe they're doing it mockingly. Sometimes they're not, though. Sometimes, in fact, they may not even really know that you're a Christian. They may not know you that well. They may see you at work and just, you know, not really have a relationship with you. They may not know you that well, but when they see you suffering, when they see you going through difficult times, then they begin to notice there's something about this person, something that's real in this person's life, something that makes sense. And then the Holy Spirit really begins working on their life, and they come to this conclusion, there's something that I need. First Peter 3, 6, uh, 15 says, Be ready at all times to give an answer for the hope that is in you to every person that asks but do it with gentleness and kindness. 
our ministry is to be one of living out our faith so that people notice. It's not about going and, and in fact, we talked about this in Alpha the other day. It's not about going and knocking on doors and grabbing somebody by the collar and saying, if you were to die tonight, would you go to heaven or to hell? Did you ever do that when you were, you know, and some, some of you may have, we'd go through some of those courses in church and, you know, we'd study all those and we'd take the tracks and we'd go, go out witnessing. And sometimes people are called to do that. I don't deny that in any shape, any way, shape, or form. Some people are called to do that, and more power to you. If God directs you to do that, go do it. But most of us aren't called to do that. But we would, because that was what we were supposed to do. <laughs> and we would go out, and I remember thinking, oh, man, I'm going to corner somebody else and talk to them, you know. And so we'd have this little formula, this little thing that you had to say, you know, and you'd have your, your four spiritual laws or, you know, some some other little track or something, and you'd go and you'd, You'd have your, you'd open up the conversation, and generally it was like, "Hi, how are you?" And so, so, hey, where are you from? If you were to die tonight, just out of the blue, if you were to die tonight, would you know? Would you? What would you? Would you be? What would you say to Jesus? Or would you? Would you be ready to meet the Lord? Or something like that? You know, there should be some question, and it just always seemed to me so contrived, so formulated, and I really struggled with it. And then when I really got into my faith and really started discovering what my walk was all about. Then I discovered that people were asking me questions. And I thought, no, 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 no. You gotta wait till I come up to you with the four spiritual laws to talk to you. You can't, you know, you're doing it all backwards. And, uh, and, but that's what, uh, uh, Peter is talking about. Live your faith in such a way that people will notice there's something there and they'll want to know about it. And be ready to give an answer. That's a key part to it. Get, be ready to give an answer for the hope that is in you. What is the word hope? It means a confident anticipation. The word hope literally means confident anticipation. So what is it that you're confidently anticipating? That God's going to do something? That He's going to meet a need in your life? That He's going to come back? That He's going, that he's going to reveal Himself? What is your confident anticipation? Be ready to give an answer for the hope, the confident anticipation that is in you, but do it with gentleness and kindness. So this prophecy, uh, back to, to, to what we're talking about in this prophecy, this prophecy was, was this idea that Jesus was going to reveal himself in his suffering. And so here they were shaking their heads at him and just, you know, scorning him. But some, some a couple of them at least, during that time and maybe more, during that time noticed. They noticed something different about Jesus during his suffering. On behalf of Dan Hurst and the Open Class, we want to thank you for watching. We hope it was a blessing.